Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In the previous video, I showed you how to design this table of contents for your website using HTML and CSS. And this is how it looks. We can see that we have all these headings of our website displayed over here. So if you scroll down, we can see that we have the future of AI. And then we have these uh, subheadings and uh, we have these subheadings over here. And if I click on any of these uh, headings or subheadings, we are taken to that section. Now what happens in this design is that we have hard coded all this uh, table of contents over here. So we have taken the headings and the subheadings from our article and uh, we have created this uh, table of contents based on all these headings and subheadings. Now if you have a long article with a lot of headings and subheadings then uh, making this table of contents can be a really time consuming task. So for that, I'll show you how to automate this task of creating this table of contents using JavaScript. So we will do that in this video. Let's get started. All right, here I'm in the source code of our project. And the first thing I will do is I'll just comment this table of contents. So I'll just select all of this from this start of the division till the end and uh, we can just press command or control plus forward slash and uh, the complete code will be commented. Now if you save this and if I go back to our website, now we can see that the table of contents is not being displayed. Now let's go ahead and display the table of contents uh, using JavaScript. So we will dynamically generate the table of contents using the headings and the subheadings over here. So for that, the first thing we need to do is create a JavaScript file. So I'll just create a new file over here and I'll just name it main.js and let's go to HTML file and let's link this JavaScript file over here. So let's scroll down and here just before the body ends, I'll just create a script tag and in here I'll just type src and I'll just set it to main.js. Right now the first thing we need to do is we need to reference all these h2s and s3s inside our post. So here we can see we have this H3 for the subheadings and H2 for the main headings. So let's go to our main.js file and uh, let's store all of that inside a constant named all headings. So let's tap const all headings equals document.querySelector all because we have multiple elements. And here let's type the selector name. So if you go back to our index.html file, here we can see we have this division with the class of page content and in that we have all the S3s and S2s. So here let's type dot page content H2 and dot page content S3. Now all these headings and subheadings will be stored inside this all headings constant. I'll just go ahead and console.log it so that we can confirm that everything is working all right. So let's go back to our website and let's open the console and uh, here we can see we have these 12 elements over here and here we can see we have the h2 and uh, then we have the s3 which is uh, the second heading and then we have current application so all these uh, headings are being referenced now the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to create the table of contents so for that i'll just create a function and i'll just call it generate doc let's go ahead and delete this console.log from here and let's go back to our html file and uh, let's see how this table of contents is structured so here we can see first of all we need to have this division and we need to have a class of table of contents and then we need to have this h2 for the table of contents heading so we have this class of doc heading and after that, we have this division with the class of headings container. And in that we have this UL for all the headings and subheadings. So let's go ahead and first of all, create this division. So here I'll just tap const and I'll just name it table of contents equals document dot create element. And we need to create a div and we need to have a class of table of contents. So let's tap table of contents dot class list dot add and let's tap table of contents. And the next thing we need to have is this h2. So let's tap const and I'll just name it doc heading equals document dot create element. I'm going to create an h2 
and we also need to give it a class so let's type doc heading dot class list dot add and we need to add a class of doc heading so let's type doc heading and in this we need to have this text of table of contents so let's type doc heading dot inner html equals table of contents all right the next thing we need to have is another division with the class of headings container so let's type const and i'll just name it headings container equals document dot create element and let's type div and let's give it a class of headings container so let's type class list dot add headings container and then we need to have a ul and in the ul we need to have all these headings and subheadings so let's type const and i'll just name it ul equals document dot create element and ul right now the next thing we need to do is we need to loop through all these content inside the all headings constant so for that we will use a for each loop so i'll just type all headings dot for each and for each of the headings, I'll just call it H. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a list item. And in that, we need to create an anchor tag. And in the anchor tag, we need to have the heading text. And we also need to have an href for the ID of the heading and also a class of heading. So let's go back to our main.js file and let's type const li equals document dot create element li. And we need to create an anchor tag. So let's type const a equals document dot create element a. Now let's go ahead and set the href of the anchor tag to the ID of the heading. Now for each of the headings, uh, I'm calling it h over here. So we can get the ID by typing h dot ID. So let's type a dot href equals. And if you go back to our HTML file here, we can see that before the ID, we also have this hashtag. So for that, I'll just use backticks over here and uh, let's tap hash and then let's tap dollar symbol curly braces and let's tap h dot id. So this will add hash id for the href of the anchor tag. And then we need to add a class to the anchor tag. So let's tap a dot class list dot add and we need to add a class of heading. So let's tap heading and then we need to set the content of the anchor tag to the content of the heading so here we can see we have the feature of ai displayed over here so let's go back and let's tap a dot inner html equals and here let's tap h dot inner html which will get us the text of the heading and then we need to add the anchor tag inside the li so for that you can just type li dot append child and a so this will add the anchor tag inside the li and after that we need to add the li inside the ul so here we can see all the list items are inside the ul so let's type ul dot append child li right now we need to add the ul inside the headings container so here we can see inside the headings container division we have the ul so we have already created this headings container over here so let's type headings container dot append child ul now the next thing we need to do is we need to add the toc heading and the headings container inside this table of contents so we have already created the table of contents and the toc heading so let's type table of contents dot append child toc heading and the table of contents dot append child headings container and we need to add all of this before this uh, page content division. So let's reference that. Here I'll just type const page content equals document the query selector page content. And uh, here I'll just type page content dot prepend. So this will add the element before all the elements inside the page content. So let's type table of contents over here. And now let's go ahead and uh, call this function now before calling this function we need to make sure that uh, we have at least one heading inside our page so here let's add an if condition and we will use this uh, all headings uh, constant and we'll see whether there are at least one element inside this all headings constant so let's type if all headings 
dot length is greater than zero then we'll just call this function called generate toc so let's type generate toc and uh, let's save this and let's go back to our website and here we can see that the table of contents is displayed over here but we have some problem we don't have the correct styling for the subheadings we have all these headings displayed as the main heading so if you scroll down this is the main heading and these are the subheadings so if you go back to our html file here we can see that for the subheadings we have a class of subheading and for the main heading we have a class of heading but if you go to our main.js file here we can see that we are adding a class of heading to all these list items so i'll just remove this line of code from here and let's add an if condition and let's check whether the element is a subheading or a heading so for that what i will do is i'll just go back to the html file so here in this post i'll just go ahead and add a specific class to all the subheadings which are the s3s and we can use an if condition and check whether we have a subheading in the main.js file so let's go ahead and select all the s3s from here so i'll just select this s3 and you can select all the other instances by pressing command d and if you're using windows you can just press Control d so here we can see i have selected all these s3s and let's give it a class so let's tap class and let's set it to toc s3 let's save this and now we can see for all these subheadings we have a class of toc s3 so now let's go back to our main.js file and let's add an if condition over here so let's go ahead and add an if condition over here and we will add this line of code inside the if condition so if we have the main heading then we will add the li directly to the ul and if we have a subheading then we need to create another ul so here we can see for the subheadings we have another ul inside the li so let's go ahead and let's add an if condition over here so i'll just type if h dot class list dot contains and we need to see whether it has a class of toc s3 and if it is true then we need to perform some tasks and if it is not true so let's add an else over here and we will add this line of code inside the else so i'll just cut it from here and paste it right here and here let's also add a class of heading so let's tap a dot class list dot add heading and now if you go back to our website here we can see we just have the main headings displayed over here now let's write the code to display the subheadings so let's go back to our code and here in the if condition let's tap a dot class list dot add and let's add a class of subheading and here also we need to add the li to the ul but we need to add it inside a separate ul but we will do that in a bit before that let's go ahead and add the li directly to the ul so let's tap ul dot append child li and now let's go back to our website and here we can see that uh, the styling is correct we have the main heading and then we have the subheadings and the styling looks all right and if i click on any of these uh, headings we are taken to that section but if you open the inspector here we can see that uh, inside the headings container we have this ul and in that we have all these list items so the main heading is also a list item and for the subheading we have another list item in our original design we had a separate ul for all the subheadings but right now everything is inside this main ul so let's fix that let's go back to our main.js file and what we need to do is uh, we need to remove this line of code from here and we need to create a variable over here so let's call the variable subheading ul and by default we will set it to null and now let's scroll down and inside the if condition let's add another if condition and we need to check whether the subheading ul is null or not so let's tap exclamation subheading ul so this will return true if the subheading ul is null so for the first time it will return true so what we will do is we will create a ul so i'll just tap subheading ul equals document dot create element ul 
Now the next thing we need to do is we need to reference the last li. If you go back to our website, here we can see that we have this ul and then we have this li. Now for adding the subheadings to this li, we need to select this li which is the last li in the ul currently when we are looping through all the headings. So let's go ahead and create a constant. I'll just name it previous li equals and we can just type ul which will store all these list items inside the ul dot last child so this will select the last li and what we need to do is add this subheading ul to this previous li so let's type previous li dot append child subheading ul now once we do this for the first subheading and when we loop through the all headings and uh, the next time this subheading ul will not be null so what we need to do is we need to directly add the li to the subheading ul we don't want to create another ul so here let's type subheading ul dot append child and uh, let's type li now once you finish with the subheadings we need to make this subheading ul null again so here in the else part let's type subheading ul equals null right now let's save this and let's go back to our website and let's see whether everything works all right so here we can see that we have the main ul and that we have another ul for the subheadings inside this first li so here we can see we have this ul and in that we have all these list items so the structure of the website is correct and if you scroll down we have another li and in that we have a ul for the subheading so everything is working all right we can also click on any of these uh, headings and we'll be taken to that section now if you go ahead and make some changes to the article it will be reflected over here in the table of headings so for example let's go ahead and change uh, this text over here so let's go back and let's go to the index.html file and here i'll just change this to future of ai updated and uh, let's save this and let's go back to our website and here we can see that the text is updated over here in the table of contents so everything is being created dynamically using javascript all right so that's basically how you can dynamically create this table of contents from your article using javascript so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day Thank <laughs> you.